Okay, so hopefully you guys had no problem doing your knit stitches. And uh, we still are, if you're interested, this isn't necessarily a mandatory thing, but um, hopefully you practiced with your stitch markers and you're getting a little bit more comfortable with that. So the next thing that we're gonna do is introduce a new stitch. This is the purl stitch. So essentially the purl stitch is sort of the reverse side of a knit stitch. And this will make more sense once we um, get a visual on this and you can see what's happening. So right now we've got kind of this dramatic um, waviness that's happening in between each of our rows here. Let me pull aside our sample scarf. Well, once we start to incorporate both the knit and the purl stitch, we start to move from this kind of chunky wavy effect to the more organized V shape knit stitch that we think of as a classic knit stitch. Now, if I flip this over and show you the reverse side, this is what the purl stitch looks like. See how it looks like a smiley frowny face? There's kind of these U shapes that are happening. So we think of the, we see these V stitches here and the purl stitch is going to be a kind of loop, a U-shaped smiley frowny face. So this makes it a little bit easier to count our rows when we work in this way. And it just gives us generally a smoother, flatter surface. And when we incorporate these two stitches, we can start to design within our stitch work. So I'll show you how we count our rows when we're working on a knit purl surface. All right, so I identify the V pattern to count my stitches here. And I basically count from the bottom of the V. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now I can start to more easily count my rows. I also wanna show you guys if we look forward a little bit. So this is a very simple pattern here, but we get a little bit of ridging that kind of visually breaks up. The next thing we're gonna cover is the rib stitch, which is if you think of the elasticity that here I wore a sweater today that the end of your sleeve has so the ribbed stitch gives us that stretchy elasticity that you see on the bottom of a hat the bottom of a sleeve or the sweater hem so we're going to cover that and then we're going to get into the seed stitch which gives us kind of a chunky seed-like look. So as you can see, we're gonna to start to use just these two simple stitches and we're gonna be able to design and create texture with just two separate stitches. All right, so when we were knitting, we were working with our yarn from the back side and I'll do a couple knit stitches to kind of demonstrate what I mean by that. Notice how currently my yarn is resting towards the front side of my work. When I went to knit, I grabbed a hold of that yarn and I moved it to the back in order to put my needle in towards the back, wrap it around, and pull it through. So as we were knitting, we were always working with our yarn on the back side of our work. So there we were knitting with our yarn in the back side. Now the major difference with purling is that we work with our yarn on the front side of the work. And that's why I say that purling is kind of the reverse of knitting, is you're kind of doing everything just in a backwards motion. So I'm gonna hold my yarn exactly the same way, woven in between my fingers and tensioned over my index finger. And rather than putting my needle in the front and lending it towards the back, I'm gonna do just the opposite. I'm gonna put my needle in the back 
and cross it over towards the front. So do that one more time. Here's our knit stitch, which is enter from the front, cross over to the back. Our purl stitch is enter from the back and cross over from the front. So we've still got that crossover. And notice I haven't moved my yarn at all here. So my yarn was already in a forward facing position. So needle enters from the back to the front. And just like we did with knitting, I'm going to wrap that yarn around and pull it through. Seems like a very simple distinction, very little that is, you know, we're doing differently, but it creates a very different visual element. So I'll show you guys. So pass the needle from the back to the front. My yarn is in a forward facing position. We're going to wrap around, pull it through. Do that again. Needle from the back, cross over to the front, wrap around with my yarn in a forward facing position, and pull it through. From the back to the front, wrap my yarn around, pull it through. Back to the front, wrap it around, pull it through. And just like we were with knitting, we're just going to move our stitch marker over. If the stitch marker, if when you're learning new techniques, if the stitch marker has just become too cumbersome and it gets in your way, feel free to just set it aside until you've got that technique down and you feel like you're comfortable bringing that element back into your work. But if it's not bothering you at all, it is you know, a good way to keep track of our stitches and make sure that our work stays the same size. So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and flip to the forward facing view and give you guys that view as well. Alright, welcome to our forward facing view here. So, got my two needles with my yarn in the front here. We're going to pass the needle, and remember, so this is the forward position, the yarn is pointing towards you. If I wrapped my yarn around to the back, that would be the back position, where the yarn is facing away from you. So right now our yarn is in the forward facing position. I've got it wrapped in between my fingers and tensioned over my pointer finger there. So we're going to slide the needle from the back, cross over to the front, so my non-dominant hand needle is in the back, my dominant hand needle is in the front. Wrap the yarn around in between the two. And pull it through to purl. Back to front. Wrap it around. Pull it through to purl. Back to front. Wrap it around. Pull it through to purl. Slide that stitch marker. It's a good time to check to make sure all your stitches are even in there. Back to front. Wrap it around. Pull it through. Alright, pretty easy, right? You guys got this? If you got the knit stitch, you should be able to transition to the purl stitch here. And if you're having trouble, it's okay, don't worry, we're going to work through it in class together. Watch the video a couple times, pause and take a moment if you need to. Okay, so I'm going to curl you guys to the end of the row here. There we go. Alright, now, once I flip my work, you can already see that this row that we just knit is a lot flatter. We're starting to get that V look that we get from knitting and purling. And we've got a nice flat piece of fabric right in that row. So, now that I've flipped my work, I'm actually going to knit the next row. So we're going to alternate every other row between knit and purl. So let me go ahead and knit. And you 
you can see that my yarn is in the back position. So knitting, yarn is in the back position. Curling, yarn is in a forward facing position. So let's go ahead and knit this row just like we did down here on all these rows, exactly the same thing. So for knitting, the, yarn go the needle goes from the front to the back with the yarn in the back facing position. And I'm moving quickly here because I know you guys already have lots of footage about how to knit. If you need to revisit any of those sections, go ahead and go back to those first few videos where we talked about knitting. But I want to move ahead and get you guys back on the purl stitch because that's the new information. So here we are. See that nice, flat, smooth fabric, how it's growing? Okay, let's flip back to the purl. And you can even see the difference on the back side here, too. See how chunky this is? And see how flat and smooth this is? Okay, so yarn is in the forward-facing position. Needle moves from the back to the front. And we're going to curl all the way down the row. Alright. Okay, so I want you guys to just practice. Go ahead and practice a couple of rows of alternating between the knit and the purl stitch. And practice transitioning between those two. So, we have now knit and purled a couple of rows, and hopefully you've gotten comfortable transitioning between the two stitches. Now I'm going to show you guys how to add this very simple design element. We are transitioning between a knit and a rib stitch, and um, it gives you just a very nice, um, simple texture. This, I think, is would be really great with a yarn that has a variation in color or um, is kind of a muted uh, yarn. That way you can really display the colors and the textures within the yarn and just add this little pop of texture throughout. So whenever we're talking about knit stitches, whenever we're talking about knitting with different stitches, the variation is really in the texture that you get from the different processes that you um, take, the different techniques that you use while you're knitting. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So we've transitioned between knit and purl stitch. We now have this length of really nice smooth fabric and we're about to flip to the purl side. So if you need to stitch one more row to get to this point, go ahead, pause the video and go ahead and stitch one more row. But we're on the purl side. So this is what you should be looking at. Now, according to what we just did, you would be purling this row because we're looking at the purl side of our work. Our yarn is forward facing. You would think, okay, now I'm gonna purl this row. But in order to disrupt this smooth pattern we have here, we're actually going to knit this row. And that's how we get that little ridge along that one row. So my yarn is facing forward. All I have to do is transition it towards the back. So let me, let me show you one more time. So our yarn is facing forward. All I have to do is slide it and transition it towards the back of my work here. So I'm going to grab it just like I normally do and just slide that back. And we're going to proceed as a knit stitch with the yarn in the back. So entering from the front, going to the back and wrapping around. And we're just going to go ahead and knit the rest of this row. And I'll show you guys the effect that that causes.
And again, I'm moving quickly because I know you guys already know how to knit and you already have the video with our um, slow demonstration of knitting. If you need to go back anytime, any point in time and revisit a skill, just go back. I have time stamped all of these videos. So if you're looking for a particular point in time in a video, you can look in the description box down below and it will tell you the time stamp at which you can find that particular skill. So I just knit that row. We're going to flip back over and here we can see we have these sort of purled ridges all the way down our work. So this looks more like this, doesn't it? Yeah. So we just purl or we just knit that row. Our yarn is in the front, but I want to switch back to this smooth knit stitch. So all I'm going to do is once again, transition my yarn from the front to the back of my work. And I'm going to go ahead and knit this row. And in your notes, you'll see the pattern breakdown for these different stitches on how many rows you should be knitting and purling. If you need to reference an analog visual of how this breaks down. As you can see now we are back to that smooth knit stitch so we just had that one row of interruption in our pattern so I want you guys to continue with your knit and purl stitches alternating every other row and then sprinkle in add in these um, disruption rows where you are knitting on the purl side and just kind of play around with the texture there with this sample scarf. I have done a little bit more sporadic um, disruption there and I will show you on this first sample scarf that I did. I did the rows at even intervals so if you um, enjoy a little bit more symmetrical pattern and a little more evenness in your work um, you can go ahead and do that but if you'd like to just kind of play around and be a little bit more spontaneous with it feel free to um, insert those at whatever intervals you like. Um, so I want you guys to go ahead and, you know, knit, a, you know, a good maybe 10 inches um, or so of uh, this particular pattern, whatever you have time for.